I uh, would hope they're being fired after damaging people's belongings. Okay, so yeah, you guys can make all the comments you want. I'm not going to comment yet until I consult with my attorneys, but I will tell you facts. So we're going to show you facts, all right? So here is the three companies that I hired. And the top one, this is interesting. I didn't know this. United and Mayflower seem to be this kind of owned by the same company, Unigroup, or, or they work together or whatever. Because uh, I'm seeing their logo now or their names together on my, on some of my paperwork. But the truck that came was United Van Lines uh, came to pick up my uh, came to pick up my stuff. So let me let me tell you really quick. I'm going to give you the day it happened. United Van Lines pulls up and they take all my big ticket items: bedroom set, freezer, uh, refrigerator, uh, washer, dryer, all the expensive stuff. They put on this van. And then they're like, we're going to leave. I'm like, you can't leave. The rest of my house is here. They said, we have no more room on our truck. You guys saw it in the in the video or the picture. The truck was like a block long. I'm like, who's the rest of this? They had my stuff separated and then somebody else's stuff and somebody else's stuff. They're like, we got to bring another truck. I'm like, who does that? Bring me one truck for my stuff. I'll fill your truck. Nope. No, nope, no. Nope. They took off. So they take off. Another truck comes. They can't fit it all on that truck, okay? And I'm like, really? They're like, yeah, we can't put it, we have not another inch of room, there's other people's stuff on the truck. This truck too has other people's stuff on. I'm like, you guys, this is crazy. So then they said, you have to come back Saturday to your house. And that was the day we were gonna go around and say goodbye to family, okay? So they said 10 a.m. in the morning. We have a third truck to come to get the last of your stuff. Third truck never shows. I call, their offices are closed on Saturday. I call a dispatcher, I'm like, where's the truck? You ready for this? I'm inside an empty house with my wife. We're just sitting there, nothing's in the house. There's just a few items in the garage and they take five hours to get there. Five hours. We sat on the floor in an empty house, not comfortable. It was starting to get warm. We had like, you know, 80, 90 degree weather and I was not happy. So third truck comes, whew, they throw the last four items on there, completely ruined our day, five hours, right? We didn't get to run around town and say goodbye to everybody. It was a mess. They have yet to even respond to that. I haven't even brought that up yet. All right, now I will tell you how much we pay, but let me, let me just tell you really quick. The other company you're seeing here in the middle Hollander Storage and Moving, okay? The, uh, you'll see that uh, that company is the one I booked everything through, okay? I, they're the people I called up and they said, okay, we'll schedule a date. When you get to be in Tennessee, they did all the logistic scheduling, okay? That's the company I went through to get United Van Lines and to get Blue Chip, okay? Blue Chip is the third company, and Blue Chip is uh, the company that, you can see the third company there, Blue Chip uh, Moving and Storage or whatever, I don't know what it says. Um, anyway, so Blue Chip I, are, are like, they were really nice and they did some really good work. They wrapped all our stuff. They went in the garage and wrapped everything and went in the house and wrapped every room and labeled every box and taped every box. They were the wrappers, so they came in and they did all that. Okay, so now, now let's get to the let's get to the pictures. Okay, so the, our stuff starts arriving. Our stuff starts arriving with damages that are like unheard of, mostly from people. In fact, their damages were so bad <clears throat> that the movers would bring it in our house and break out their phone camera to take a picture. And there must be a website where they just laugh about these things. So let's start here. 12 boxes are missing. This is one of the fortunate boxes that made it. And yes, they destroyed that box. That was their box, it was brand new. Somehow it got to look like that and they had to tape it up to keep it together. So that was one of the boxes that made it. We have 12 boxes, probably that size or bigger, that are missing. They have yet to answer for that or put a value on that. And they want us to list what's in those missing boxes. Really? Are you kidding me? Oh, hold on a minute. Ready? Really? How are we going to list that? Okay. I don't know how you do this, but they completely crushed the seat on my dining room set. 
And uh, let me go through these because we don't have all day. I want to make this fast. I don't want to complain. Um, so there, they crashed the seat on the dining room set. These are just a few of the scrape marks on our dining room table. The wood's gone. Here is one of our globes was in pieces. It wrapped in bubble paper in pieces. It's one of those Disney globes. They're like about $60, $70 at Disneyland in their shops. And you, Anyway, here's a better look at another one that got damaged. That's another Disney globe. There's more to it below, but you can see where it just broke. Uh, and that was wrapped in, they wrapped it and packed it. This is one of my Ikea bookcases. Big chunk missing. And this is another one of my Ikea bookcases. It looks like Freddy Krueger moved it. And another one of my Ikea right there. Completely chewed. And lastly, another different, this is in um, Jack Jr.'s room. Okay, that's completely messed up. Let's go to this. Now here is the connector for our bed set. As you can see, one of the pieces is missing, the circular pieces that, that you screw into or you attach to. This other one's cracked, so uh, they could not put it back together. They didn't know where the pieces were. They're the ones who took it together. This bed set was brand new, uh, delivered to our house in California. So they were the first to touch it and this stuff's missing. So there's a big chunk of wood out of the headboard right there. And there are other damages I will show you in a minute. Let's go to my refrigerator. Here we go. This is the, everything you see in there. It was, it was mildewed. All our drawers up to the walls. There was mildew in every drawer because they, they unplugged it and wrapped it moist and then stuck it in storage. All right, <clears throat> here we go. That's that. You can see that dent right there where the light is misshapen. Yeah, there's a big dent in my Samsung refrigerator and there are, you can, it, the, the stainless steel is all ruined. There are stain marks and that you can't remove with anything. No cleaner will remove them. Here's my stove, brand new stove that I got on the show. That's the front all scraped right there. It gets better. This is, this is the top of the stove. See how it dips down, it's bent. That entire panel has been twisted. It's completely misshapen. I wish I could get a better shot, but it didn't look good on camera. Here's one of my burners, brand new burner. It's all scraped up and it doesn't work. Uh, and then look at the cast iron grill. It's made out of cast iron. It's broken in three places, completely missing. Here's our Tempur-Pedic bed, the box that came in. There's one shot. Here is another shot. And here is another shot. Here is uh, my wife's dresser, sideways, sorry. Big chunk of wood out of there. Here's the other part of her dresser where the handles were broken off and were nowhere to be found. Here we go. That's the handle on my garage freezer. It was white. Now it's banged up. That was full of mildew also. The feet are missing off the bottom of the freezer where you can adjust it so it balances. And I left the best for last. Somebody fell on top of the washing machine, had to have to have bent it in so bad that you could see the metal clips from the inside of the washer. Uh, we tried it, it flooded our washroom in Tennessee. It obviously didn't work. And we have damage to the dryer too, but uh, that's, that's just basically the highlights. So those are the pictures. There are more damages and more stuff, but those were the cream of the crop. And uh, I filed a claim, and here is the claim that I filed. This is part one of some of the belongings. I apologize, it's so small, I should have made it bigger. Uh, it lists the bed, the Tempur-Pedic bed, it lists everything in there. And basically it's over $16,000 in damages. So they send us back, we wait a week, we have dirty laundry piling up, no washer and dryer, we have mildew, we've cleaned the fridge, but there's still mold in our refrigerator, which is completely disgusting. They come back with this offer of $7,000 and they tell us the dryer that's dinged up and, and scratched and all that, uh, the inspector was unable to confirm that it was related to moving and the tempur mattress, okay, was unable to confirm that the damage happened in moving. Now, let me explain something about tempur mattresses. You have to ship them flat. In fact, I didn't know this until Hollander Moving and United <clears throat> informed me your mattress has to stay flat. 
if you tip it, all the beads or whatever's in there is going to go to one side of the bed and it's going to be just it's going to be deformed and it'll never go back. <clears throat> Excuse me. So they pull it off the truck in Tennessee on its side, which tells me that it was stored on its side and it is completely deformed and they're claiming that they had nothing to do with it. OK, so that's it. That's all I can tell you right now. I've shown you the pictures. I've shown you the damages and I've shown you what their offer is. And I said, it's completely unacceptable. I said, you will replace every item I have. Okay. That's damaged. Completely replace it. Okay. Because the money that they were offering on the, some of the items, it wouldn't fix. It wouldn't even repair. Oh, you ready for this? The people they send out to decide whether my stuff is damaged or can be repaired or what those people, it's the same company they want me to use to repair everything. So what makes you think that the repair company is going to say, oh yeah, this is damaged. You need to completely replace it. No, they want the work. They want the job. They want the account. Not that I would ever use them to repair that stuff. So I told them, I said, here's the deal. Uh, you know, I, I, I want it all replaced. There's no reason to, you know what? It was all great condition and you damaged it all. So you got to you gotta buy another one. Uh, and, and they were insured up to like $125,000 on that shipment. So, so here's the deal. I, I'm not going to complain. I'm not going to rant. I, it just doesn't look good if I look, if I do that. Uh, I just wanted to show you what happened. I may need your guys' help in the future. Uh, I will be producing a YouTube video that will go over this one more time and, and show the whole world the damages. And, you know, I might need you to sh help me share it and get the word out. That's if this thing, if my... Lawyers say it's okay. Uh, I'll let you know in social media and on the next show what my lawyers say on Monday because I'm talking to them on Monday. So that's it. Let's get that out of the way. I think we've covered everything, right? Okay, now let's let's talk food real quick and then I'm going to look for some of your guys' questions. Uh, oh, no, no, no. Dave, Dave says a bed, $3,500. Uh, Dave, the bed set was $3,500, brand new. That would be the dresser with the mirror the tall dresser, the headboard, footboard, framework, okay, all that, uh, and the nightstand was $3,500. And that's not a lot. I mean, it is a lot of money, but we paid it off over so many years. The mattress, the Tempur-Pedic mattress, and the recline, they each recline, it's like a split mattress, that is a $6,000 mattress. And that is definitely going to get replaced because we can't afford to buy another mattress. That took us years to pay off. So, um, <clears throat> so anyway, uh, let's go to food real quick. And then I'm going to check out, um, let me see what else. And uh, they just tossing the furniture in the truck. Yeah, a lot of people think that the delivery, the, the moving truck rolled on the 40 a few times. Uh, anyway, uh, recall. Elliot, my friend, just just gave me this right before the show, and it's there's a recall from once again, good old Foster Farms has another recall. I want you guys to look in your freezers because this was back a ways. This is meat that was uh, manufactured on March eighth, tenth, and eleventh. One million pounds of chicken is recalled. I know some of you may buy it when it's on sale. It seems Foster Farms is always on sale because they're trying to move stuff. Uh, it would have a best use by date. See, this one says March 21st or March 29th. Okay. Now I know some of you, uh, may ha if you have it, it's probably in the freezer. I hope you didn't use it over the holiday. I just learned about this or I would have posted it sooner. I'll be posting it on uh, social media as soon as I get off the show. So check your meat. Personally, last time Foster Farms had a recall, I threw out all the Foster Farms in my freezer. I just got rid of it and I stopped buying Foster Farms. That's me personally. Um, this stuff keeps happening. I don't know what they're doing in their plants. So it's just, just be safe. Check your meat. It's not worth risking. If you're not sure, toss it anyway. The labels in the freezer are worn away. Just be safe. That's all. I'm just giving that information. You do what you want. Uh, let's see here. Do, 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 do. Uh, do, do 16 grands. <laughs> okay, Lady Nikki. Yes, Lady Nikki, I understand your comments. I understand all your guys' comments. I just can't comment on your comments. So, but it's they're they're very entertaining to read. Thank you. All right. So, uh, what else? New opening for the show. I am working on a new opening for the cooking show. As soon, 
I, ha I haven't even finished unpacking. You guys are like, where's the new opening? Where's the new opening? It's going to be different. It won't show the old kitchen um, because there's a new kitchen. And you can't do the old kitchen anymore. So it's coming. Be ready for that. I think it's next week. And then I'll film the new Jack on the Go, which is going to be pretty fun. I'm looking forward to doing that one. Uh, that's coming. YouTube. Let's talk YouTube for a minute. And I'd love to know your guys' feedback because this is a hot button for me. Uh, you've heard me talk about YouTube crowdfunding. What is crowdfunding? Crowdfunding is Indiegogo. Uh, crowdfunding is Kickstarter. Crowdfunding is when you ask your fans or viewers or friends or whatever, everybody you know, to, to give you money to help, uh, help uh, pay for a project to be made or developed or an idea or a service or whatever. It's where crowds of people come together, bring their money together, and they and they give some of sometimes they give you prizes back. Uh, like uh, let's take for example, let me give you some specifics. Freddie W. on YouTube, he asked for uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars to do Video Game High School season two. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, Hannah Hart asked for two hundred thousand dollars so that she could go on the road in an RV and tour and meet all her fans. Uh, who was the other one? Shea Carl. Shea Carl asked for $200,000. I think it was $200,000. Got way more than that to do a documentary on his life. Now, I like Shea Carl. Great guy. But isn't his show all these years been a documentary about his life? So he's just asking for $200,000 to edit it all down? I'm not sure. I won't be buying it, but he reached his goal and beyond. And then, and now let me give you, understand, these are YouTubers that make a lot of money. To us, it make a lot of money. Um, who knows, I don't know if I'll ever be there. Doesn't matter. As long as I, my needs are met, I'm good. Um, but they make a lot of money and they went to their viewers and asked for money. I mean, they could have they could have cut a deal with a sponsor. They could have, you know, helped fund it, some of it themselves, but they went to their viewers. The viewers, you guys don't always have a lot of money. And you guys, support us by viewing our videos. That's, we make a living that way because of you. So you've already doing us a favor. Now YouTube is, has built this button, a support button, where you can support your favorite YouTuber. Really? You're supporting your YouTuber by watching this video. I don't get it, I don't like it, I think it's selfish, and I have a lot of YouTube friends that disagree with me and think it's a great idea. It's a bad idea. It's a bad idea. You might as well call it a begging button. You know, if you do a good product, people will come and you'll earn money. If you don't, then maybe you should try a different career. But do not ask the viewers who already support and love you for money. Because there are poverty kids out there and poverty adults out there that will reach into their pocket and send a dollar, send ten dollars, stuff they can't afford to, to send. They're going to send it anyways because they love you. So I'm completely against this. It's going, it's coming. And some people are calling it a YouTube tip jar. I will not be using that feature. The only time I would ever use it is to raise money for somebody else, a, a worthy cause. But for me, I'm not gonna ask for money from you guys. I think it's, I think it's tasteless. I don't like it. I have yet to find a thing in my head that tells me it's worth doing, uh, me asking money, or, or I just can't. Um, so that's where I'm, <clears throat> That's where I'm at on that. <clears throat> and I get a little emotional. <clears throat> I'm getting myself all worked up. The worst part is people are going to do it. That's going to get abused. And, and let me give you another example. Another reason why I'm not into this. Shea Carl is part owner of Maker Studios. It's a YouTube network. Okay? He recently sold that for $500 million, yep, million. If they match, from what I heard, if Maker Studios does what they did the year before, they get more money. But Shea Carl's part owner of that, okay? I don't think he needs to ask people for money. And I don't, you know, and from his show, he's big enough that he doesn't need to ask for people for his money. Yeah, I'm gonna try to make bobbleheads. I'm telling you right now, I wanna make bobbleheads. And I'm looking into it right now, and I'm gonna have to fork out the money out of my own pocket. I'm gonna have to save up like everybody else in the world and spend my money how I want to do it. So that's the that's the scoop, um, and that's all I have to say about that. If you have something to say, I don't know why my comments aren't. Oh, here we go, they're coming in. 
I'm going to look at for your questions right now. Do, 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 do. Thanks, Jonathan, for your prayers. I appreciate it. Uh, wow, you guys are so supportive. Thank you. It's They're rolling in. I don't know what, what happened. But, uh, da, 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 da. all right. So I'm going to refresh my comment section here. Oh, here it got more coming. Um, I wish YouTube would be faster on refreshing comments. I may have to go back to manually doing it. I apologize, guys. Uh, crowd, crowdfunding is when everyone chips in. Oh, okay. So you guys are talking about it now. <laughs> I'm a little behind you and you're a little behind me. Uh, it's very selfish. Uh, so basically YouTube is becoming PBS. Who wrote that? The Bammy 99. That is a great, great comment. So here's what I want you to do, guys. <clears throat> You don't have to post a comment here about the YouTube support button, but tell your favorite YouTubers how you feel. It's like, dude, really? We're, we're like already supporting you, you know? Um, so, but express kindly. Don't be mean. Don't say, oh, Jack thinks you're a jerk. Don't do that. But say, you know what? I, I don't, I don't really like the, the share, I mean, the support button. And I think, I think, you know, you're asking too much of us. So that's just my opinion. Uh, asked for money before he sold Maker, before he had 1 million subs. Okay, yeah, I know before he sold Maker Studios, Shay asked for that money. But you know what? I can guarantee, if you want to know what, roughly what YouTubers are making, there is a website called Social Blade. You can punch in any channel, and you can see a range of probably where they're making their money. Uh, it's, so, uh, yeah, you, if you think Shay Carl was not making good money before Maker Studios went on sale, before he had a million... Before he did a million, I just broke a hundred thousand. The guy had half a million. All right, you gotta you gotta realize that's a full time living. I mean that pays for everything. So uh, the movie was not about him, but about fifty other YouTubers. Well, R Spoon ninety seven. When I was at the YouTube studios and he spoke in front of me, he said it was a documentary about his life. So that's what that's the last thing I heard from him from his mouth in front of me. Uh, he may have changed the plan. Uh, he may have rewritten it. I don't know. Uh, good guy. Once again, great guy. I have no problem with any one of the three people I mentioned. I just don't agree with Jack Jr. Bobblehead. <laughs> Lewis, you guys are crazy. Uh, I just don't agree with the whole asking for money from viewers. Not a fan of it. <clears throat> uh, <laughs> Let's see. Love Jack Jr. in the on-go videos. Jack Jr. is getting tall, huh? He's almost as tall as me, guys. Uh, he's getting better. He's getting more involved again. Uh, he's working out for football. He's playing football this year. Um, so he's pretty excited. Let's see here what else you guys got before I go to the next topic. All right. Uh, I think they had former UPS, USPS, FedEx, and airline baggage handlers moving your stuff. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, so let's go back to, uh, let's go to another topic now. Uh, the winners are down below, and I want you to realize um, how I picked the winners. I went to the comment section, and I, I just scrolled real fast and landed on one. What did that person want? Great. Where's that person from? And I scrolled again. What did that person want? And I got an apron and a shirt and a hat, the show hat. And the first person that asked for the show hat that I, that I just randomly scrolled. I don't know who they were because I looked at the comments, not the names. And then once I chose somebody, I looked at the name and wrote it down. So as you can see, I got some really cool countries. I got a lot in USA, of course, and I got like my show hats going to, uh, I think it's Rafi in Switzerland. My show apron is going to somebody in Canada. I have Poland, uh, I have England, Portugal, um, some really cool countries, Morocco, Venezuela, Ireland. So look at the winners in the description box. I, I put them down there. If I didn't put them down there, I will after the show. I'm almost positive it's there. Now I gotta look. You guys got me all freaked out now. Did I put it down in the description box? <laughs> oh yeah. So I will be contacting you guys this week to get your addresses. It's gonna cost me a boatload of money to bail it out, but I don't care. <clears throat> this is stuff I could, I could send overseas. And I'm really excited to send uh, presents and gifts overseas. <clears throat> Sorry. I apologize for clearing my throat. Uh, I wasn't aware of this button. That's not right. The button's coming. Uh, there are a few people in beta right now using the support button. 
I, I don't know if it's in the video or if it's outside the video screen. I, I just know that it's coming. And I've expressed it. I've expressed my feelings to my network. I've expressed in the show. <clears throat> but it is coming. Uh, moving. Macy's. This week I have a lot of videos on Jack and the Go. Get ready. Because I'm showing you my 4th of July barbecue. That video that I filmed the last two days. It was a two-day barbecue. It was insane. And these this family opened up their family barbecue on like it's like hundreds of acres of land right next they right the river runs right through their land and we had a barbecue and there were giant pigs and it was just it was awesome oh yeah and we cooked food too no <laughs> we cooked giant pigs it just sounded funny sorry it was funnier in my head okay uh so that's coming and then right after that i have like three or four jack and the goes this week is my new york trip the macy's competition from the moment i get on the plane to the moment i i finish the competition uh, and then there's going to be a food review later on in New York. Uh, so check that out. Jack on the go. You got to check out that channel. Uh, coming up on YouTube this week is going to be... What am I doing? What am I doing? Where are you? Uh, they've kind of changed YouTube, so I have to jump around a little bit. I apologize. Do, do, do. Creative Studios, Video Manager. Uh, we're doing... Oh, and Barbecue Wars is coming. That's right. Uh, Jack Jr. and I filmed the first Barbecue Wars together, but I have I have some Barbecue Wars episodes. Love the Food Box just aired, uh, and I just did uh, a, ba a bacon, what is it, Lazy Man Baked Beans. That's it, Lazy Man Baked Beans coming this week too. So a lot of good things there. Uh, what else? Wish I could have won, but it's okay because I love watching you, Jack. Kashiko7, um, I love you guys so much. I wish everybody could win. I just don't have enough to hand out. Uh, but I will be doing more. Still can't believe Jack Jr. ate the habanero burger at Franks. Didn't ever flinch from the heat. <clears throat> Jack's good with spicy. Uh, yay, more videos. Tons more videos. Uh, they're going to be coming faster. Here's the most exciting part on Cooking with Jack. This is when I'm filming tomorrow the unboxing of my Traeger. And the smoking series is about to begin. I'm starting with a pork butt that, that big. I don't know, that big? Is it that big? I don't know. It's huge. It's like 20 some odd dollars. But it was a pork butt and it's in the refrigerator right now. So I'm going to be doing that. I'm also doing monster corn dogs. That's a video coming. I'm coming to film. But I'm excited about the smoking series. It was supposed to be in June, but I had to do the move. I'm back on track and I'm excited. We're going to do an unboxing of the Traeger. And then we're going to do our first smoking episode. I'm going to do a series of three, anywhere between three and five smoking episodes. I think I'm even going to try and smoke some cheese. Who fig go figure, right? Uh, what else? What else? What else? Doo, doo, doo. Um, new opening, I already told you. YouTube, I already told you. I have my notes. I apologize. I can't do it without my notes. Uh, I think that's it. I mean, uh, that's, that's it. Be looking for updates regarding my, my moving fiasco. But overall, I just want to end the show by saying something. If all that stuff never gets replaced, I'll be okay. My family will be okay. We'll have to rebuy some stuff and save up some money, but we're going to be okay because we got a new home and we couldn't be happier. Uh, we have great people who love us from back in California, all across, I mean, on the show, all over the world. Um, and that means more to us. And then you guys, just your thoughts and, and your wishes and your prayers and everything, that makes it all really, really cool. So how can you, I mean, we're healthy. I have no disease and my family's safe. Those are the things I have to hold on to. So as I go slowly through this process, uh, I have to realize what's important. That, that stuff's just junk. I'm not taking it with me. So, uh, so anyway, I just want you to know, we're very grateful. We're very happy. We're not hurting at all. Um, we're good. And, you know, there was a lot, there's a lot of people out there that are, that are hurting. So I just wish my blessings go to them. I'll keep you posted on this, but... Um, like I say, we're doing awesome, and I'm glad to be on the live show again. I'm glad to be on track. The videos are flowing. It's going to be a great year. Some big things coming. Uh, I'm trying to grow the show up. Jack University is coming back. We're going to start teaching you new cooking terms that even I don't even know what they mean. Uh, we're going to learn stuff together. So be ready. Get excited. And I will see you guys uh, on the next live show. I love you. Bye-bye.